All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going to do a video on the input seal replacement on the main transmission. That's where the engine drive shafts go into the transmission. And so this is for an EC-135 helicopter. And you'll know it's leaking if you see oil dripping out of the drive shaft covers dripping into your engine deck. Or if it's leaking pretty bad, then it's going it, to, it just gets slung around inside the drive shaft covers. And it leaks out of the side of the drive shaft covers and just gets everywhere. And then dust sticks to your drive shaft covers. It's nuts. This job isn't crazy, but there's some pitfalls that we're going to need to go over and some things that, that we'll go over that'll make it a little bit easier for you when you're doing this job. Okay, you have to jump around in the manual a whole bunch of places. I'll show you the part numbers, where to find them. Not a big deal. Show you the tools, what we got to use. You're not going to knock this job out in 20 minutes, okay? You got to take apart a decent amount of the helicopter before you can even change the seal. Changing the seal is actually really, really easy, but getting to it, it just takes a minute, okay? With that being said, let's get started, all right? All right, fun times. Aircraft maintenance, helicopter maintenance and repair, man. This is super fun, super exciting. You guys are going to love this. Man, aren't you excited? All right, let's start off. We're going to the aircraft maintenance manual 63-21-008-3. That's where we're starting. This is the replacement of the shaft seal on the main transmission input drive. No worries. Nothing complicated. Let's start here. We're going to go all over the place. Okay, first thing, nothing crazy, uh, consumables, CM101 is grease, it's just regular air grease, okay? The spec is, Na uh, it's NATO G395 or MIL PRF81322, it's just regular grease. Royco 22 CF, Mobile 28, Aeroshell 22, just normal grease. Moving on. All right, step number one, which is the job setup. Step number one, remove the freewheeling shaft. Okay, so now we're already out of this part of the manual. So let's go there. Okay, remove freewheeling shaft. What do we do here? We're in uh, AMM 6321004-8. Okay, if we go down to the tools that we need, we're gonna need this puller, and we're also gonna need, it looks like this, we're also gonna need a socket wrench, and here it is. If you don't have tools, you can't do the job, all right? You're not gonna be able to handle it. I mean, you're not gonna be able to do it, you're gonna, you're gonna screw shit. <laughs> you're gonna end up screwing something up if you don't have the right tools. Okay, the next thing is you go to the consumable material, cleaning agent CM208. What is that? I don't think I've ever heard of that one. Maybe that's a new one to me. I don't know. Let's check it out. It says, uh, white spirit, total fina elf lubricants. I don't think I've ever heard of that before. Is that the spirit of the white elf? Oh, what? That's weird. Or is it white spirits, like... White lightning. White lightning. I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's just cleaning agent. <laughs> I, I don't know, guys. Cool. Moving on. Now that Airbus updated the manual, they like to put in the parts that are routine replacement parts, like the O-ring and the cotter pin. And that's just for this part of it. This is just for the freewheeling shaft. This isn't even for the seal. Okay, O-ring part number 06343132737 cotter pin 06317011156. If you go look at the IPC, the cotter pin, there's alternate cotter pins. I think there's three different ones you can use in there. Okay, we scroll down. Job setup. Oh, we're already going to go out of this manual into another part of the manual. Remove the drive shaft. Remove the main rotor drive shaft. All right, let's do that. But before we do that, we got to read this caution, okay? This is ANP 101, Aircraft Maintenance 101, and definitely Helicopter Maintenance Basics, all right? It says, risk of corrosion to the freewheeling shaft if you touch the polished areas with your bare hands, okay? Wear gloves. If you don't, it's going to cause corrosion. It's not going to, you're not even going to see it right now. You can wipe it off, but guess what? Next time you take it out, you're going to be able to see your fingerprints on it, okay? Basics. Wear gloves, man, on the stuff inside the helicopter, inside the transmission, inside the engines that's always covered with oil. Don't touch it. Don't touch the shiny metal stuff. Wear gloves. All right, cool. All right, look, we're not going to go over the remove the drive shaft because that's pretty simple. That's like a basic thing. But you got to get all these firewalls and cowlings off and get to the place where you can get the drive shaft off. 
There's six bolts on the front. There's, uh, I'm sorry, there's three bolts in the front that go in the nut plates, and there's three bolts in the back that have double stack up washers and nuts. All right. We'll go over the install of that. It's more important, the removal. You could uh, look that up. It's not complicated. Otherwise, this video would be like an hour. Okay, we're going to go over most of the notes and cautions. This one right here it says uh, you can remove the freewheeling shaft with the main transmission removed or installed. You can also remove the freewheeling shaft with the input drive quill removed from the transmission. And you used to, that used to be in the maintenance manual because there used to be, well, there still is an inspection on the input drive uh, or the, what do they call it, the drive stage of the main transmission. That's the input drive quill. There's an inspection on that. But if you go to the main manual, that it says removal, that says removal and installation of the drive stage of the main transmission, and you scroll down, what's it say? Remove the main transmission. Well, that obviously ain't right. So if you need to remove your quill or drive stage, whatever they call it, you're going to have to get with Airbus because this has been a thing for about two years. They pulled it out of the manual. Not sure why. All right, we're back in the manual with removing the freewheeling shaft. Cool. Remove the freewheeling shaft as follows. Note, uh, the procedure for removing the freewheeling shaft in the left hand and right hand are the same. They're just going to talk about the left hand here. Okay, great. They say that like 10 times. All right, now we're starting this job, finally. How long is it? It's been five, I've been talking for like five minutes. Damn, sorry about that. Remove the retaining ring two and the ceiling washer three from the freewheeling shaft. That sounds super easy, but it's not, it's not really super easy. Removing the retaining ring, not complicated, okay? Put some oil soak rags under there because there's oil in that freewheeling shaft. But in order to get that cover off, it's not easy, okay? The O-ring is in a groove, and it's not easy to get off. And if you try to pry it with a screwdriver, you're going to screw stuff up. The cover's aluminum. The drive is steel. And I'm sure if you get a gouge in that drive, you're... You're hosed and you can't i don't think you could change that i think if that's if that's if if the input drive is messed up i think you're screwed i think you need a whole new transmission but don't quote me so anyway there's a special tool i don't think i, I think this is in the manual i looked for it i couldn't find it um if it's there and you know what the part number is let me know i'll put it in the, in the description um but my company has this has this here it's with the kit replacing the seal you say hey i need that re seal replacement kit they send all the stuff and and this anyway it's like a slide hammer it grabs onto that ring and locks and then it's got like a slide hammer so it pops it right off of there except the one i had didn't have the slide hammer part which is a whole nother story for another day thanks guys okay awesome once you that cover off uh take the o-ring off and throw it away next remove the corrugated washer from the freewheeling shaft it's going to fall out, more than likely, with a whole bunch of oil. All right, next thing they want you to do is remove the cotter pin from the castellated nut and throw it away. Okay. All right, scroll down a little bit. Now they want you to use a socket wrench. They want you to use that special tool, the socket wrench that I showed you before, to remove the castellated nut as follows. Put the socket wrench on the castle nut, but make sure that the middle torsion slippage mandrel of the socket wrench does not engage with the groove end of the threaded bolt. Look, just use the socket part. Don't use the flat-headed screwdriver inside piece. Okay, trust me, this is important. I've overlooked this in the past, learned from my mistakes. If you end up putting the flat, flat-head screwdriver piece inside of there to try to counter hold the torque, you're gonna wreck that threaded bolt. Okay, and then the next guy who has to take it off won't be able to because it will just pop out. Or I'm sorry, the next time you try to torque it, you won't be able to because it will be, the flat-headed screwdriver piece won't fit into the threaded bolt and be able to hold the torque that's required, all right? So with just the socket part of the socket wrench, use that to break the torque on the castellated nut, all right? Hold the blade, put the rotor brake on, it, it'll it's a decent amount of torque don't put the inside piece in just use a socket part to break the torque after that you engage the f slotted part of the flathead screwdriver piece of this tool to hold that to hold that threaded bolt because it just floats around in there and then you can unscrew the bolt all right 
I mean, I'm sorry, and then you can unscrew the nut, and then that part's off. So remove the tightening disc from the threaded bolt after you take the nut off. It'll probably fall out too. Done. Okay, here's a caution. It's in red. They say this a couple times. It says, if you don't use the correct tools for this job, you're going to screw stuff up big time. All right, make sure you use the right tools. All right, moving on. Okay, now they want you to disengage the freewheeling shaft from the input pinion. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to attach the puller with the thrust piece to the freewheeling shaft, just like this. The legs of this tool are kind of wonky sometimes. They don't want to grab. That's not a very wide lip. But if you have this tool correct, it can lock them in and hold them together. And the thing shouldn't, it shouldn't be too hard to pull off. Okay, once you have that tool engaged, turn the spindle of the puller clockwise to disengage the freewheeling shaft from the input pinion. Okay, this part right here is important. Make sure that the freewheeling unit, which is the sprag clutch, stays in the freewheeling shaft that you're pulling off. Okay? If the freewheeling unit stays on the input pinion um, while you're pulling this thing out, put your hand in there and slide it into the input. Slide it down to the freewheeling shaft, the one you're pulling off. If the freewheeling unit is fully out of the freewheeling shaft, then you have to install the freewheeling unit sprag clutch onto the freewheeling shaft according to a different chapter. It's kind of spring-loaded, okay? We're not going to go over that now. Just make sure it stays in the freewheeling shaft, the part that you're pulling off of the input drive. Okay, next it says remove the spacer from the input pinion and then remove the ceiling washer from the inside of the freewheeling shaft. There's a good chance that number 12, the spacer, is also inside of the freewheeling shaft. It has a bevel. Make sure it goes back on in the right direction. It says that in the manual on the installation. We'll go over that later. Okay, right here it says examine the freewheeling shaft for damage surface protection. If you find damage, touch it up according to whatever with this varnish, whatever. Okay, this is a new one to me. I have never really seen this damage, but it says examine the ball bearing number 14 for damage. If you find damage to the ball bearing, do the following steps. We're not really going to go over that. That's the bearing right there. Check for damage. We'll go over that bearing um, later on during the install. They talk about it. Okay, awesome. Good news. We're back to the very first manual that we started on. Removing the shaft seal. Removing the seal, replacing the seal. That's where we're on right now. Okay, we had to take the drive shaft off. We had to take the freewheeling unit off. Now we're doing the seal. We're at that point. Cool. Number one, remove shaft seal as follows. Caution. When the cover is detached, ensure that the bearing support is not detached. The installed oil nozzle can be damaged. Okay, the bearing support is attached to the quill, which goes into the transmission and it's big old gigantic piece and the only thing at this point after you take the bolts out the bolts that hold the um, cover that holds the seal on they also hold this part on what do they call it they call it the bearing support right there is the oil nozzle so if you were to take the quill out you have to take this part out which has an o-ring on it which you can't find in the manual anymore but this part is holding the quill together into the transmission and if you yank if you yank on all this stuff, it's going to bust this piece off, and then you're, you're in a world of hurt. So that's what that caution is saying, all right? Okay, make sure you read the notes and cautions. That's what this entire video is about. Read the damn manual. Read the effing manual, okay? Note. Note. Identify the position of the individual parts towards the main transmission housing using a suitable pen before the cover is removed. Okay, like this. So the cover, the bearing support, and the quill, whatever, support piece, there's like three pieces there. They all have the same bolt hole pattern. There's like six bolts that hold it on, or seven, or eight, or whatever. There's a whole bunch of bolts that hold these together. And the bolt hole pattern is not really the same. So you need to make sure that it is marked. Like this one already had paint mark on it. I don't know who did that, but that's nice, nice work. All right, let's continue. Okay, next, it says remove screws and washers. There's seven of them. They're actually bolts, but Airbus calls them screws. Remove the cover four from the flange seven. Uh, remove the O-ring from the cover and discard. This cover that holds the seal 
on, just it just it'll just come right off now. All right, so there's the cover. I call it the housing, but it, they call it the cover. And look, there's something that's not in the maintenance manual that's important that I need to talk about right now. Okay, when you take the old one out, it's a good idea to check, take measurements all around the inside of that cover to see how far down the seal is. And then when you go back on with the new seal, take the measurements and make sure they're around the same. But more importantly, make sure that seal is not cocked, okay? It's not crooked. It's the same type of seal that's the mast seal. The mast seal is way wider, and that one is even more important. You need to make sure it's even. Because that tool is really, it's so, it's so wide that, that pushing that seal isn't straight. So it's all wonky and it will go in crooked. And if it's crooked, it's not going to seal jack. Okay? It's not going to seal anything. So the manual doesn't talk about this here. That's just a note from experience, all right? Don't be that guy who puts this all back together and runs it and it leaks like it's going out of style. Because it's crooked, all right? Just a heads up. One other thing about the seal is it doesn't go all the way down into this cover or this seal housing, all right? There's a space. The reason there's a space there is to get the removal tool into there. If you pushed it all the way down, then you would never be able to get it out, and it would probably be in the wrong position on the drive and wouldn't seal. But um, anyway, that's just a heads up. There's a gap. It's just the way it is. All right, now we're into the fun part. So now you take this, the puller, install the puller into the cover and the shaft seal and lock the three extracting arms of the puller behind the shaft seal. Okay, here's a picture of the puller tool with the, th what do they call it? Three extracting arms. These three extracting arms right here are pretty far extended. And in, in here, they're retracted. So extended, retracted. Cool. So now you put it in there when it's, retracted and then you slide those arms out lock them down with the bolts so they're extended so that it puts pressure on the seal when you push it out okay now it says install the cover with the attached puller in into the retainer and push the shaft seal out of the cover and then discard the seal okay so the retainer is that big plastic piece so you don't, I mean, that, that cover is pretty thin-walled aluminum, and you don't want to jack it up. So that's why, and so you could push that housing all the way out. There's enough room. It slides right into that, that uh, what do they call it, retainer. Push it out. You could use an arbor press. It's not crazy. You can almost do it by hand. Depends on how long it's been in there. Push it out. Done. Everything's good. Next, install shaft seal as follows. Apply a thin layer of grease, the grease we talked about earlier, regular aircraft grease onto the outer circumference of the new shaft seal and onto the sealing lip. Also, all done with this job, before you put the input drive or the freewheeling shaft back into this where it seals onto the shaft, I'd put grease on the lip, like a decent amount, and on the shaft when you slide it in. You don't want to screw it up when, when you're putting it in, you know, on day one. Like, don't be that guy. You know, I think we've all been that guy once. Next, let's just take a moment and go to the IPC real fast for the part number for the seals. 63210101, input drive, okay? Item number 110, 110A and 110B. Look, number 110 is old and busted transmission. So 110A and 110B are the newer styles. If you look at 110A, it says down here, description for location. It says post-service bulletin, and it says NP. That means not procure, not procurable. So if you have this in your stock, it'll work, but you can't really order it because if you order this, they're going to get the other one. So if you go to 110B, let's just say a post SB 63001, well, that says it's in stock. The other one is not procurable, okay? So the one you want to order is 46393020372037. If you order the other one, it starts with 075, 0750111. 491. And the old, old one? I don't know. Okay, back at this. Install the shaft seal as follows. We put grease on it already. Now, 
Insert shaft seal into the cover so that the sealing lip side will face toward the main transmission side when the cover is installed. You can see the spring on one side. Well, that spring piece goes inside the transmission when it's installed. When it's installed, you shouldn't be able to see it on the outside. Make sense? Okay, it says use drift and push the shaft seal into the cover. That's the drift right there. It's got a little bit of grease on the outside, so when it goes into the seal, it doesn't wreck the seal. You have the seal on the drift, and now the drift is pushing it inside the seal housing cover. You could do that with your hands, you know, just put your hands on it and put your body weight on it. I mean, especially if you're like me and you're pushing 220 on a hoof, right? So next, four, not in the maintenance manual. Check the measurement around the seal to make sure it's even and make sure it's around the same number that we had previously. Cool. Just a heads up, not in the maintenance manual. Just a tip for my friends out there. All right, let's continue. So it says apply a thin layer of grease, same grease we're talking about, CM101, onto a new O-ring and install it into the groove on the cover. I didn't take a picture of that, but self-explanatory, right? All right, it kind of says this twice. It says this in the note, and it also says it in the procedure E, okay? It says, when the cover is installed to the flange, observe that the markings that have been applied previously when it was removed are lined up, okay? And then it says, align cover onto the transmission so that the bore holes in the cover are exactly aligned with the threaded bore holes in the flange of the main transmission, observing that the markings that have been applied when the cover was removed. Cool. Put the cover back on, man. Make sure that you line it up the way it was. If you don't, you're going to end up cracking this housing in your host, okay? So don't do that. Okay, here's a note that probably gets overlooked. Just saying, don't overlook the note. Do not torque the screws yet. This is the note for what's underneath it, okay? It says attach the cover to the flange of the transmission with the screws and the washers. Attach it. But don't torque them yet, all right? Because we still have to install the freewheeling shaft in the main rotor drive, and then we can torque it. Or maybe just the freewheeling shaft, and then you could torque it. I think, I think the idea of not torquing it now is so that it still has a little bit of movement, so the seal can be totally centered on the main rotor drive. That's my understanding. Okay, but look, don't forget to come back here to torque it, all right? And do the other things that follow. There's more that they don't talk about leak checks or anything except for this chapter so don't go back to install the freewheeling shaft and then call it good you need to come back here to torque it all right just saying install the freewheeling shaft as follows okay the note says the left and right hand side are the same okay caution risk of damage to the ball bearings the ball bearing is an assembly if you do not keep all the parts together damage can occur make sure that you do not disassemble the ball bearings accidentally number 14. i've never seen that happen but it's a note here. And since we're going back together with this thing, it talks about putting the bearing on. It says, if removed, install a replacement ball bearing number 14 as follows. Put on some cotton gloves. Good idea. Use a cleaning agent. The, what do they call it? The um, spirit of the white elf or the white lightning. White lightning. So clean it with the white lightning. <laughs> I, these guys are off the hook, dude. They're hilarious. I don't think they understand how hilarious they are. Anyway, moving on. Okay, it says to heat it up. It says it's hot. And then it says do not apply, only apply force to the inner ring of the ball bearing to install it. And then it says right here, number four, it says use a standard manual arbor press and a drift to install the ball bearing onto the input pinion. How are you going to do that if it's on the helicopter? You're not. You're going to take the quill off. You're going to put it on your arbor press and press it on. Okay? But it doesn't talk about that here. So that's a flaw in the manual. Just another one. All right? Just saying. We're not doing this. We're not doing number 14. We're not putting that ball bearing on. But I'm just telling you what's going on in this manual here. Oh, man. Here's another, another comedy show in the maintenance manual. Okay? It says effectivity main, um, main transmissions up to including serial number 1089, old and busted. Okay? That's pre-service bulletin, whatever. All the ones we have, or if you actually do flying and you have to actually overhaul your transmissions, you're going to get a newer one. So 1089 is old, just saying. But if you've got the old and busted transmission, caution here, okay? It says make sure 
that you adjust your freewheeling shaft package correctly. So if you've got the old and busted transmission, you can feel free to adjust your shaft package accordingly, okay? But if you've got the newer transmission, the new hotness, you can rest assured that your package is already correctly adjusted. So no, no need to adjust your package, all right? These guys are freaking hilarious. Loving it, loving it. All right, moving forward. Come on, you got to laugh a little bit when you're doing this, right? All right, next. Figure out what kind of oil goes in your transmission because that's the type of oil you're going to put on the seals and stuff. You're going to put on the O-rings, all right? So that's all it's saying right here. All right, next. Put the spacer and the sealing washer, which is number 12 and 11, in their installation positions as follows. Apply a thin layer of oil, which is transmission oil, to the spacer. Put the spacer in its installation position on the input pinion and make sure that the chamfer on the inner diameter of the spacer points to the input pinion. It's rounded because the input pinion spot that it sits on is a little bit rounded too, so you can't have the total 90 degree side pointed on it. It'll make a groove all around bad news, but that's basics, right? Apply a thin layer of transmission oil onto the ceiling washer number 11. Put the ceiling washer number 11 into its installation position into the freewheeling shaft. Make sure that the ceiling washer number 11 touches the ball bearing 10. I think ball bearing 10 is the freewheeling unit, the spray clutch, because that's right where it goes. Anyway, so that's, that's not super clear, but that's where it's going. All right, so now it says apply a thin layer of transmission oil to the shank of the input pinion, which is the quill, the outside piece, and uh, make sure you use the correct transmission oil. Uh, risk of burns, it could get hot, don't touch it, but it doesn't really get that hot. They want you to apply heat to the freewheeling shaft as follows. Uh, thermometer, blah, blah, blah. Use a, heat, a hot air gun and heat the freewheeling shaft until a temperature between uh, 50 and 70 Celsius or 122 to 120, uh, 158 Fahrenheit. That's not really hot, but it's decently warm. All right. Note, if you turn the freewheeling shaft counterclockwise it disengages from the freewheeling unit and that's what they want you to do they want you to engage the freewheeling shaft with the input pinion turn the freewheeling shaft counterclockwise and move it into and move it onto the input pinion until the freewheeling shaft gets to the stop so you turn it clockwise and you push it in until it hits the stop okay cool okay now it says put the tightening disc into the freewheeling shaft and onto the threaded bolt. Use the special tool, the socket wrench, to install the castellated nut, they call it castle nut, onto the threaded bolt as follows. Install the castle nut onto the threaded bolt. Insert the torsion slippage mandrel of the socket wrench, which is the flat part, into the groove end of the threaded bolt. Counterhold the torsion slippage mandrel which is the flat-headed screwdriver piece of the socket wrench, and torque the castle nut to a minimum of 20 newton meters, which is 178 inch-pounds. Cool. Okay, so if the slotted part of that threaded bolt is all jacked up, you're not going to be able to do this. It's going to be very hard to do. You could actually change that piece. It's just a, a, like a lock, a lock ring, and then you could just pop it out. It, um, so it's good to have one of these on hand if it's a machine you've never worked on, or you could just roll the dice. You know, it is what it is. Uh, but uh, you end up screwing these up by holding that centerpiece when you loosen the torque on that nut like we talked about earlier, okay? All right, we're almost done here, okay? We're almost done with this part anyway, but caution. It says um, risk of damage to the cotter pin and the ceiling washer. If the cotter pin and the ceiling washer touch... Do not bend the cotter pin onto the top surface of the castellated nut or the threaded bolt. Bend the cotter pin around the side surface of the castle nut. All right, safety castle nut with new cotter pin as follows. It says if the cotter pin does not go through the hole, like if the hold of the nut doesn't line up with that threaded bolt, it says that you can apply a higher torque to the castellated nut until, they, until you can install the cotter pin. It doesn't give you a max torque, but man, it, you don't want to gorilla torque that thing. Because next time you're not going to be able to get it off. Just saying. And it says safety the castle nut with cotter pin. According to maintenance task card 20 It talks about 
using cotter pins. You should go read that. It's kind of interesting if you can't fall asleep. Anyway, there's a picture of the cotter pin. That's the way they want you to do it. Done. Okay, cool. That's on. So now they want you to install the corrugated washer number six into the freewheeling shaft. And then they want you to put a new O-ring, which has transmission oil, onto the cover. Install the O-ring into the groove of the ceiling washer, what they call it. They call it just set of the cover. Ceiling washer is cool. Install the ceiling washer into the freewheeling shaft. Make sure that the O-ring is not twisted or damaged. Yeah, got it. Install the retaining ring into the freewheeling shaft as follows. Push and hold the ceiling washer against the corrugated washer. It's kind of wonky, dude. It wants to pop back out because it's got that corrugated washer pushing against it. So you got to push it in there with one hand and then try to put that uh, retaining ring in there and loop it around twice to make sure it fits. Also, make sure it fits into the groove the way it's supposed to. It says make sure that the retaining ring is in its correct installation position. All right, cool. Looking good, looking good. All right, but look, we don't want to go down to the rest of this, the close-up, the functional test, all this stuff. But first, we got to go back to where it says to torque the cover bolts. All right, apply a torque between 8 and 10 newton meters which is 71 to 88 inch pounds to the seven screws, which are number two, the screws that hold the cover seal and the input quill all together. Torque those up. All right. But if you stay in this manual, it says close up. Oh, you're done. No, we're done, dude. We don't have the drive shaft in. All right. So now we go back to where it says install the freewheeling shaft. Do a functional test of the freewheeling unit. So if you go to that chapter, what it says is if you turn it one way, it's supposed to engage. If you turn it the other way, it's not supposed to engage. Go to that section. It's actually pretty simple. Make sure that you functionally test the freewheeling unit. Not complicated. Next, install the removed main drive shaft, and that's where we're going to go now. But we have to come back to this chapter because we're there's about three or four more things we still have to do. All right, so install the drive shaft AMM 63110041C. We go all over the place here. Fun times. But that's just the way it is, you know? I think we're all used to that by now. All right, it says ins ensure that the rubber profile ring number two is undamaged and seated correctly in the groove of the cover. So we had it off before, so put that thing back on. Nah, no worries, not a big deal, okay? Apply a thin layer of CPC corrosive corrosion preventive compound CM505 onto the faint surfaces of the drive shaft flanges, washer, and output flange. Okay. They want you to put this CM505 on every contact surface of the drive shaft and the input flange and the output flange. Well, what the heck is CM505? CM505, it says it's mil C11796 class 3. I, I don't know, dude. Just Google it. It comes up with a bunch of things, but I know one thing that we have that matches this is Braco 248. Whenever you go messing with the drive shaft, make sure you got Braco 248 on hand, okay? It says right here, it's Mil C 11796C Class 3. All right, I know this one's a long video and it's crazy detail and your eyes are glassed over. It's no worries, dude. Push through. We'll push through, man. We'll get this done. All right, it's not, it's not, it's really not hard, honestly. All right, connect the drive shaft six to the freewheeling shaft three. So the front end of the drive shaft. So get that drive shaft in there and don't get it scratched. Maybe cover it with some rags so you don't scratch it on the firewall. Once you set it up in there or hold it up in there, it says connect, connect the drive shaft, the washer, which is that triangle stainless steel pleat piece, and the freewheeling shaft using uh, screws and washers. Not a big deal. To do so, install the washers so that their countersunk side faces the screw head and tighten screws, okay? After you get all three of them in there, torque those bolts to 133 to 142 inch pounds. Okay, done. Now the front's hooked up. Now we got to do the back side. Actually, when you're torquing the front side, you need to use that special tool that counter holds the drive shaft. Otherwise, it's just going to spin the drive shaft. Uh, I think we've all done that before. It's not complicated, though. No worries. Oh, and they want you to apply a torsion slippage mark starting from the heads of the screws towards the flange of the freewheeling shaft using safety lacquer CM680. I think it's the blue stuff. All right, caution. It's red. It says the drive shaft can be damaged by incorrect attachment hardware 
ensure to use correct attachment hardware and that the correct screw length when the drive shaft is installed. Okay, ensure to install the drive shaft in the correct installation procedures or positions. I'm sorry. Connect drive shaft number six to the engine output flange 10. Insert screws toward the drive shaft. Got it. So the screw head faces aft. After you got the, sh the bolt in there, screw, bolt, whatever, fit two washers on each screw and then install new nuts, new nuts, put on new nuts, bro. All right. <laughs> and torque tighten uh, 133 to 142 inch pounds. It's important that you have two washers underneath the nut and no washers underneath the bolt head. That's what they're telling you to do here. Then they want you to paint torque stripe torsion slippage mark onto the nuts towards the drive shaft using safety lacquer. All right, let's go through the IPC real quick. We're not done with that last chapter, but the IPC, no big deal. All right, the washers are in the IPC. Go find them in the IPC. It's 63110101 for the front and the back, just to make sure you have the right ones, especially if the ones you're dealing with are all wrecked. The part number for the nuts for the main drive shaft on the aft connection are LN9338-08. Oh, man, we're almost done. All right, this is important. Never seen this this wrong though okay honestly check installation check dimension x1 check the dimension okay it says measure the installation check dimension x1 equals 71.2 millimeters through 74.2 millimeters which is actually better in inches it's 2.800 through 2.920 inches starting from the contact surface of the drive flange towards the engine the contact surface on the drive flange towards the engine and on the engine side, it's where the bolts contact number eight fairing seal housing. All right. All right, cool. Install drive shaft fairing, install forward firewall, install engine cowlings, install transmission fairing. Man, we are almost done. Sweet. Man, it's Heineken time. Where are we at here? It's Miller time. We're going back to the last chapter, which is the installation of the freewheeling shaft. Now we're back here. It says add oil to the transmission if you need to. Next, ground run of the engine with the power setting ground idle for five minutes. The leak check. Check the transmission for leaks. Check your seal for leaks. Man, done, done. The dishes are done, man. We're done with this job. Cool. So, nothing crazy. It's just a lot of work to get to the seal. Changing the seal is easy. Make sure you have the right tools. Make sure you got Braco 248. Check the seal when you put it into the seal housing cover, whatever they call it, and make sure it's even. Make sure it's even all the way around or at least pretty dang close. Make sure it's not all cockeyed or whatever. If you need to get the spirit of the white elf or you need to get white lightning, white lightning. I don't even know where you find that stuff. I know maybe in the hills of West Virginia or maybe even around here in Virginia, you might be able to get some white lightning, but... If you're going to grab that white lightning, you're not going to want to do that when you're working on the helicopter because you'll probably get fired. That's just a side note, you know? Anyway, man, I know this is a long one. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hope it helped. The main reason for, for me making the, this video is because I want you guys to understand that you have to go all over the maintenance manual. And there are a crap ton of notes and cautions, and a couple of them are important. Like, hold up, bro don't torque those bolts yet well that's a good note all right because if not your seal won't be centered onto the freewheeling drive okay so anyway read the manual read the manual read the manual again this job's not too difficult this job's done i appreciate you guys watching this channel i appreciate you guys tuning into this video and if you know of anybody who could find this video useful please please just send it to them you know forward it to them forward them the link it's all on youtube i'm gonna start putting them on rumble as well and that's it guys thanks and i'll see you guys next time later